Success in Formula One is guaranteed by a combination of many things. You need a good driver, an efficient car, and a brilliant technical team. But of course, all of these things requires a big budget. The more money a team has, the better the quality of drivers and backroom staff they'll attract, and the more upgrades they'll be able to execute. So you could as well say Formula One is a money sport. This is one of the reasons why it seems like a selected group of teams are dominating the sport. You see the likes of Red Bull, Mercedes and Ferrari challenge week in, week out. It's because they have a budget compared to other teams and they can easily afford to pay the best drivers, build the best cars and hire the best technical heads in the sport. For many years, the FIA has been looking for a way to reduce this advantage and increase competition amongst all the 20 teams on the grid. And recently, the F1 governing body introduced a budget cap. At first, the budget cap was hailed by many teams as a good initiative. But as we approach the second half of the season, teams are beginning to feel the bite. Despite sitting top of both the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship, Red Bull is not left out. In fact, the team risks disqualification if they're unable to keep their spending within the limit of the budget cap. But why is Red Bull in this situation? Weren't they informed about the new rules? Of course they were. Going into the 2021 F1 season, the FIA officially informed all the teams on the grid about the new budget cap policy that would limit their spending to $140 million per season. Official documents confirming this development were sent out to all the teams, and even the media was well informed about it as well. As reported by many news outlets, there are a number of reasons for introducing this new regulation. One is to make the championship more competitive and also to promote sporting fairness and ensure the long-term financial stability and sustainability of F1 teams. At the same time, the governing body believes that the budget cap initiative would also help preserve the unique technology and engineering challenges within the sport. But isn't that counterproductive? I mean, we all know that F1 cars are heavily backed by technology and you need quite a lot of money to build and upgrade them regularly. So on one hand, the FIA wants all the teams on the grid to compete on a level playing ground. On the other hand, they expect the teams to preserve and improve on the existing technology while cutting down their expenses to fit into the budget cap. That's a difficult task for the teams. To make matters worse, the FIA rolled out this new regulation in the same season where new cars were launched. Ordinarily, it should be a trial and error season where each team fuels out their cars to see what adjustments they need to make. However, these adjustments don't come cheap, and with every upgrade that's being implemented, they risk exceeding their budget limit. This could spell all kinds of trouble for even the best teams on the grid, from points deduction to outright disqualification. Red Bull in particular has been one of the most active teams in terms of upgrades. And in fairness to them, the aggressive style of development has worked well. But they are also well aware of the consequences that could arise from adopting this strategy. Red Bull's team boss, Christian Horner, admitted recently that they're on course to exceed the $140 million budget cap set by the FIA for this season due to the rising inflation rate and expensive cost of shipping cargo. Horner made a passionate appeal to the FIA to employ a sensible approach to the situation and reconsider its stance. According to the Red Bull boss, the penalty system is not easily understandable, and he believes that one of the things that the FIA has to address immediately. You don't know where you are, and that there needs to be a common sense application because the situation might get worse. By suggesting that things might get worse, Horner wasn't in any way predicting that the teams would go broke. On the contrary, most of the teams in Formula One are in a strong financial position, and revenues seem to be growing every year. So it's certainly not about being cash-strapped. It's more about the newly introduced budget cap regulation and the rising inflation rate. Christian Horner predicts that if something is not done to ease the restrictions, around seven of the teams on the grid might have to miss the last seven races of the season to keep their expenditure within the budget cap limit. And worst of all, the issue might even escalate to become a court case at the end of the season. What we really want is clarity, because what none of us want at the end of the season is us all rushing to the courts of appeal in Paris, Horner said. The Red Bull boss is definitely not alone in this. 
Some other F1 bosses also share the same sentiments. For instance, McLaren's team boss Andreas Seidel publicly admitted that many teams would have to exceed the budget cap limit to finish the season. I think that six or seven teams would exceed the cap, Seidel told Motorsport Total in Austria. Which would have the consequence that, depending on how high this excess is, it would be a violation of the regulations and there could have been corresponding penalties. Ferrari is another team that has complained about the budget cap. In fact, team boss Mattia Binotto has been one of the most vocal critics of the initiative and he was quite affirmative in his claim that virtually every team on the grid will exceed the cap at some point of the season. I'm pretty sure all of us, and not only the top three teams, medium teams will hit the budget cap very soon in the season. And I think it will be really a shame that a sport like F1 will be dictated by the budget cap at the end. It has to remain a sporting and technical challenge. Mercedes is also one of the teams pushing for the budget cap to be adjusted. Highlighting the situation, Mercedes Director of Trackside Engineering, Andrew Shovlin said, Early on, we had a plan to land on the budget cap and work within it, as everyone did. As costs like freight were coming in at being multiples of that, or energy and the effect of inflation that has gone from being looking at ways to peg it back to stay within, to a point where the challenge becomes insurmountable. However, some critics like F1 legend Jacques Villeneuve has described the appeal made by teams for the FAA to increase the budget cap as nonsense. Jacques specifically attacked Red Bull and Christian Horner during an interview session with Formula One magazine, saying they have to fix up their car. But everyone has agreed and signed for it. And if flying costs more, it costs more for all teams. Then you only develop a little less. Continuing his criticism, Zach cited the case of smaller teams like Alpine as a case study, pointing out that the team has a lot of money to spend but still chooses to play by the rules. He suggested that financial punishment might be too soft a deterrent. Rather, he is urging the FIA to deduct points or mandate offenders to pay a fine to other teams. But despite all these threats and criticism, Red Bull is determined to continue implementing upgrades on their car in a bid to hold onto the top position in the standings. Thankfully, the team has been able to avoid crashes in recent races, but the inflation problems are still there. However, Red Bull would still need to travel across the world for the second half of the season, which means they might well still exceed the budget cap. And given the number of complaints from other teams, Red Bull might not be the only offender at the end of the season. If that's the case, the FIA will have some difficult decisions to make very soon. But what do you think? Will it be fair to disqualify teams that exceed the budget cap? Let us know what you think in the comments section.